read this from 11 with you. Make sure you have your reference table open. For reading from 11, organic, you always want to be looking at tables P, Q, and R. P, Q, R. If you are not looking at these, you are doing something wrong because most of the answers are going to be on there. So I'm going to skip down for multiple choice. So, that's it. Number one. In the alkane series, each molecule contains, so I'm going to think alkane, and if I need to, I'm going to go to my reference table. Um, you can say I have table R there, but I'm going to go back up and I see my alkanes right here. And my alkanes, I can see I have all single bonds. So, all single bonds. And this is from the table. Yeah. Number two, which kind of bond is most common? Organic compounds. So, organic, you want to think it's always going to have carbon. So if it always has carbon, carbon is a non-metal. So usually it's going to bond with other non-metals, so it will be covalent. Number three, carbon atom in an alkene has a total of, so again we have an alkene, they have two covalent bonds, two ionic bonds, four covalent or four ionic. I don't like ionic because we just said covalent. Um, so each carbon, I want to think, okay, focus on carbon. Carbon always wants four bonds. Carbon will always want four bonds. Four. What is the maximum number of covalent bonds that a carbon atom can form? So carbon, like we just said, likes four bonds. So C always wants four. It makes that tetrahedral shape. Number five, a hydrocarbon molecule is saturated if the molecule contains. So I think, okay, hydrocarbon, I want to think it's just C's and H's. And if it's saturated, I always want to think saturated is single bonds. So I'm looking for basically my alkane. So single covalent bonds only. I like choice one. Saturated is only single bonds. Number six, which statement explains why the element carbon forms so many compounds? Well, uh, I'm going to do this via the answer. Carbon forms so many compounds because carbon atoms readily form covalent bonds with other carbon atoms. Uh, you want to think that carbon can make uh, chains, it can make rings, it can make networks, things like a diamond. And we've seen some of those long chains, so it readily forms bonds with itself. Number seven, in the alkene family, each member differs from the preceding member by one carbon atom and two hydrogen atoms. Such series of hydrocarbons is called, uh, when they're talking about one carbon atom and two hydrogen atoms, they're talking about the general formula. They're talking about the homologous series. Homologous series can be found on table Q. Uh, so I'm going to go back. I'll put that up. When I look at the homologous series, it's talking about these general formulas that you see. So CnH2n plus 2. That's how I know that my formula where my C's and my H's are going to change. My alkenes, I can see it for and my alkynes. So you're looking at the general formulas. So we can note that. But if you ever see homologous series, that's exactly what they're talking about. Okay, number eight. A molecule of both ethane and a molecule of ethene both have the same. I want to think F and F. Ethane means I have single bonds. Ene means I have double bonds. So it is not going to be the bonds that I have. Um, but that F, F means two. It means two carbons. I know that because if I go to my reference table, I could look at, this is table P that you're seeing right here. Um, down so you can see table P. 
Table P gives you your prefixes, and F means two. So if F means two, it means the number of carbon atoms. They're going to have different general formulas in their homologous series. So uh, alkanes are going to have CnH2n plus two. Ethene, my alkenes will have CnH2n, so the carbon they're going to move. Nine, the products of condensation polymerization are polymer and water. When you think of condensation, that's exactly what I want you to think. Polymerization makes the long chains. Polymers is a key word. Condensation, think water. Number 10, which type of compound represents the structural formula shown below? So they're asking me, is a ketone an aldehyde, an ester, an ether? You should never get these wrong because you should always be going to table R. And on table R, I'm looking for something that's not C's and H's. I see an O. So let's go to table R and look for somebody that just has an O sitting between a chain. So I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I'm scanning. Third one down, I see right here. My ether is going to have, it says R-O-R. -R. So it's got a chain, you can see from my example, a chain, then an O, then another chain. So O is sitting right in between. So it is going to be my ether. 11, if a hydrocarbon molecule contains a triple bond, the IUPAC name ends in ein. So I know this because if I go to my table uh, Q, I can look at my example. Uh, I hope you're looking at your table Q. I'm not going to go there. But that's what you would do, and you would see that if it ends in Y and E, it's a triple bond. 12, which compound is an organic acid? Again, this is another table R question. So you should just go there and say, okay, I'm looking at my acid, my organic acids, six down. I see it as a C, a double bonded O, and an O. So I can see this example that they call propanoic acid, so I know it ends in oic acid. But I'm looking for a double bond O and an O. So I go back here, and I say, well, who could have a double bond O and an O? Well, it's got to be somebody with two O's. So I'll just draw that. A C with a double bond O and an O H. So I need two O's. It can't be one. It can't be two. So now it's either CH3COOH or CH3COOCH3. I like that O next to the H. So I like number three because the O next to the H is what gives me that part of the acid. Number 13. Which is the structural formula of an aldehyde? Again, aldehyde, table R. See how a lot of these I can get my answer. You don't need to know these. Go to your table R. I'm going to say, okay, I'm on my table R. Look for an aldehyde. Aldehyde is the fourth category down. I see that I have a C with a double bonded O and an H. So I have a C with a double bonded O and an H. There it is. 14, which general formula represents an ether? Again, I'm going to table R. On table R, I'm going to say, okay, I'm looking for ethers. Ethers have an O, R, O, R as the general formula. This is a total gimme question. Choice three. 15, which are the products of a fermentation reaction? We'll think fermentation is how I'm going to make alcohol. So it's not a salt and water. That's neutralization. It's not a salt and an acid. So I'm between is it an alcohol and carbon monoxide, or is it alcohol and carbon dioxide? Carbon monoxide is very bad for you. Carbon dioxide is not. It'd be very bad if that process made carbon monoxide. So it is CO2. Okay, moving on. Number 16, which compounds are isomers? So isomers, this is a vocab word I need. Isomers are going to be, it's going to be the same formula. 
um, but you have to have a different arrangement. Same formula but with a different arrangement. So I have one propanol and two propanol. These locations are changing. One means I put it on the first carbon. Two means I put it on the second. But they're both still propanol, propanol. So I like that. All they did was move it. So it is the same but with a different arrangement. 17, which is the correct structural formula for 2,2-dimethylpropane? So you want to think, okay, let's break down my propane. So I would go to my table Q. Actually, I'm going to go to my table P. Which is that prop means 3. Then I look at my table Q and I see ethane is my example. So ane, alkane. It's got single bonds. So I'm going to go up and say, okay, propane. So I have, from here I know I have three C's and they have to be single bonds. So let's look for a chain of three C's with single bonds. So if I look at this first one, I see one, two, three, four. That's not the answer. So I go down to number two. One, two, three, four, five. I can actually touch all of those. That is not the answer. One, two, three. Ooh, I think that's perfect. And if I look down at four, one, two, three. So these two are still in the running. So now I go back up here and I say, okay. Well, it said two, two, dimethyl. So meth means one C, um, one C, and then two, two, dimethyl. So I have, on the second carbon, I've got two different one Cs. So this one, number three, see how it puts it on the first carbon? I could actually kind of go down, tricked you. So that's not three. So four, here's a methyl, here's a methyl. So I like choice four. Number 18, which is the chemical process illustrated by the following equation. So I see that I have a sugar, and then here's what I want to focus on, this OH. If I look at table R, I'm going to see that OH, this is going to give me an alcohol. So what makes an alcohol? It is fermentation. 19, which reaction is used to produce polyethylene? From ethylene, here's what I want to focus on. It says polyethylene, poly. Poly means it's a polymer. So I'm looking for polymerization. So it's not two, it's not four. So is it addition polymerization or condensation? Condensation, I need water. And they did not mention water. So it's not three, it's got to be one. 20, which structural formula represents the product form of the reaction of Cl2 and C2H4. So C2H4, I'm going to think, if I were to draw it out, I'd have two Cs, and that means I have four Hs, so each C is going to get two. If I look, my carbons aren't happy. They would only have three bonds. So you put a double bond, so this is a double bonded carbon. So this is going to be unsaturated. So if it's unsaturated, I'm always going to do an addition reaction. So if it's an addition reaction, that means that of C2H4, the Cl2 is just going to jump right on. So instead of looking for something that has two Cl's and still has everything else, so choice one. Methanol is classified as A. So I'm going to think, one, I can go to my table Q to help me. Because if I go to my table, I'm sorry, not table Q, table R. Because if I look, look at this example of an alcohol. It says one, propanol. Propanol. So I see that that means I have three C's and that's an alcohol. So if I go back, I said methanol. So meth means that I will have one C, that I have to have an OH on it. That means the rest of these are just regular H's. So I'm going to go with choice one. It is a monohydroxy alcohol, meaning monohydroxy means that you only have one OH group.
Whereas if you said dihydroxy, that would mean two OH groups. The secondary and the tertiary, those are different locations. I think I come to a problem just like that. Two. Number 22, what is the total number of pairs of electrons? So that's important. That one carbon atom shares with another carbon atom is C2H4. So again, C2H4, you have two C's. You have four H's, so this must be a double bond. So they're asking you to look right here. So how many pairs of electrons? You have two pairs, which would really be four electrons. But they're asking me for the pair, so two pairs. Choice two. 23, to be classified as a tertiary alcohol, the functional OH group is bonded to a carbon atom that must be bonded to how many other carbon atoms? Well, if it's tertiary, you need three. A tertiary alcohol might be something like this. If I had uh, something like that. If I'm looking, that C with the OH group, there's something one, two, three other carbons. That's your tertiary. Okay, number 24. The student investigated four different substances in the solid phase. The table below is a record of the characteristics marked with an X exhibited by each substance. Which substance has characteristics most like those of an organic compound? So organic compounds, are they going to have high melting points? No. So that means an A and C are marked that, so it is not going to be A or C. So low melting point, yes. Is it soluble in water? Maybe. Insoluble in water? Maybe. Decompose under high heat? Yeah. Stable, are they electrolytes? So are organic things electrolytes? No, definitely not our electrolytes. So that's going to get rid of B. So that leaves me with choice B. So organic things, because you want to think organic, generally those are going to be covalent bonds. Generally covalent. 25, which hydrocarbon is a member of the alkene family? So I'm going to think alkenes. All I have to do is I'm going to go to my table Q. I'm going to look at that homologous series. If I go to table Q, I'm going to see that, see I have these general formulas, so my alkenes, my alkenes and my alkynes right here. So an alkene has a CN, H2N. So I have to find somebody that fits that formula. So if I plugged in 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so this should be C2H4. It's not. That's out. In number two, I have C3, so that would be my N, so C3, and then 2N. 3 times 2 is 6, C3, H6, I like that. It fits into this homologous series. <coughs> number 26, which structural formula represents a dihydroxy alcohol? So I think alcohol means it has OH. Dihydroxy means it has two of them, so it's got two OH groups, so it can't be choice one, it could be choice two, it can't be choice three because it has three of them, and it can't be four because it doesn't even have one, so choice two. 27. Which com organic compound will dissolve in water to produce a solution that will turn blue litmus red? So blue litmus turns red. I actually want to go back. This is an acid-base question. That means I'm probably going to look for an acid, but let's just verify. On table N, litmus can turn from red to blue. It's blue if it's above 8.3. So anything above 8.3, I want to think, well, that's a base. So above 8.3 for your pH. So you're going to have, I'm looking for a base, and a base is going to have a witch. Oh wait, I'm doing this wrong. Blue litmus is turning red. 
So it's blue above 8.4. So if it's turning it red, it's red below 5.4. Below 5.4 is an acid. So if I go to my table R, I look in my acid. It has a double bond O and an OH. So I like choice three because it's an acid. 28. The compound 1, 2, ethane diol, so I'm going to focus right here on the diol. Di means 2. And all is an OH, so I need two OHs. So if I have two OHs, I like choice 2. It is a dihydroxy alcohol. Number 29, which formula represents a ketone? So I want to think a ketone, I'm going to table R. On table R, I'm going to see that a ketone is going to have a C with a double bonded O. So I'm going to have just one O, so that's out and that's out. So I have two, two or three, and this is an O H I don't like, so I like that that O is kind of in between. So you need a C with a double bonded O, that's a ketone. That could be that one. Number 30, which condensed structural formula represents a saturated hydrocarbon? So if I'm saturated, I want to think I need an alkane because I need a single bond. So I'm going to think, well, it's a hydrocarbon also. Hydrocarbon means I only have C's and H's, so it can't be choice two, it can't be choice one. So it's either three or four. So I'm going to look and I'm going to say, okay, it's got to fit the formula CNH2N plus 2 and choice 3 will. Okay, last page. So 31 says draw the structural formula for this compound. So I'm just going to draw it out and I'm going to say, okay, I have a C with an H3. I have a C with an H2, I have a C with just an H, and I have another C with an H2. Let's make sure everybody's happy. This C has four around it, this C has four around it. This C only has three, the last C only has three. That means this must be a double bar. 32, the formula below represents a product form when HCl reacts with CH3, CH2, CH, CH2. So I can see the HCl and then I've got that Cl is right on there. They want me to name the IUPAC name. So again, my table R is really going to help me because if I see a Cl, that's a halide. I know I say fluoro. So their example gives you two fluoro propane. So I want to figure out, okay. Well, how many C's do I have in a row? I have four. Let's say four, I say butte. So this is a butane. And then I have a Cl that's on the second part of it. Uh, I'll write it right above. So I go two fluoro. And really, that would be one more. So two fluoro butane. Two fluoro butane. Is that answer? 33. Given the equation butanoic acid plus one pentanol in water, which class of compounds does the product belong? Well, I took an acid and I took an alcohol. When I take an acid, it's going to have this group, C double bond O, OH, and I'm going to take an alcohol that's just going to have that uh, C with the OH on it. So that means if I want to make water, I make water with H2O. So I'm going to, oops, I rewrote this, but I wrote that funny, sorry. A C with an OH, should have wrote like that. So then if I make water, I have OH and a C, there's my H2O. So what would be left? I'd have a C with a double bond O, and I'd have a C with an O. That's an ester. A little bit tricky question. 34, identify the homologous series to which CH2, CH, CH3, if you see homologous series, 
I want you going to table Q. And on table Q, let's rewrite this. I have C, let's see, 1, 2, 3, C3, H2, 3, that's 6. So C3, H6, that fits in the formula of CN, H2, N. So that means the homologous series is your alkene. Your alkene. 35, which type of chemical reaction is represented by the equation? So I have C4H8, I have Cl2, and then I can see that both of those Cl2s jumped on. So this is an addition reaction. 36, draw the structural formula of the product 1,2-dichlorobutane. So let's break this down. Butane, but means I have four Cs. The ane tells me I have single bond, so one, two, three, four. One, two, dichloro, so two CLs, and they're telling me the location. It's on the first carbon, and it is also on the second one, so one, two, and then fill in your H's. Don't put H's on anything but the carbons. Leave everybody else alone. 37, the condensed structural formula for N-pentane is CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. Draw the formula of an isomer. Isomer. So if, let me draw the first one. CH3, and I bond, CH2, 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 CH3. So this is a regular... So if I want an isomer, I have to move it around. So let's just take somebody off the end and move them to the inside. So now instead, put four C's. It'll land, maybe put a C on the second one. Give everybody else H's. You still have five C's. You still have the same number of H's, but you moved it. So there's your isomer. So here it says, given the balanced equation for an organic reaction, I'm going to look at this for 38, 39, between butane and chlorine. So I see my reaction right here. I can see that one of the CLs got on, and it looks like they replaced somebody else. So I got to slide back up to the top of the page. 38, identify the type of organic reaction, because they both did not slide on. This is a substitution. This is a substitution reaction. 39, draw a structural formula for the organic product. Organic product. So, my product that was organic was right here. So, C4H9Cl. I want to draw C4H9Cl. So, put four Cs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that means dump the CL on the end. Or wherever you want to put the CL, to be honest. 40, this is a tricky question. Uh, 40 and 41, it says, Many esters have distinctive odors, which lead to their widespread use as artificial flavorings and fragrances. For example, methyl butanoate has an odor similar to pineapple. And ethyl methanoate has an odor similar to raspberry. 40, draw a structural formula for the ester that has an odor similar to pineapple. So pineapple was this, the methyl butanoate. So I'm just going to copy. I'm going to go to Tim my R. I'm going to just copy. See, go down to your ester, third one from the bottom. I see here it's methyl propanoate. So the methyl is right over here. This is the ester part. So basically, the methyl is what I put on the end of the O, and then this is propanoate because there's three C's, but butte would just mean there are four. So just basically copy it. So I'm going to go, okay. I have, here's my ester group. Put your methyl on, CH3. You can draw it out, or just being lazy. And then you're going to have to, actually, I'll draw it out. You'll have to have four C's, put your H's on, and you're perfect. 41, what is the chemical name for the alcohol 
that reacts with methanoic acid to produce the ester, sorry, ester with an odor similar to raspberry. So I got my meth. Let's say raspberry was this one. Here's my raspberry. So of the methanoate, that came from my methanoic acid. So this F right here, that has to be what's my alcohol. So F and all. F and all. And that's my answer. Uh, draw the structural formula for 224-trimethylpentane. All right, I'm going to draw it right down here. So start with the pentane. Pent means five C's. One, two, three, four, five. 224-trimethyl. Remember, meth means one. So on the second carbon, I have one C. On the second carbon, I have another C. On the fourth carbon, I have a C. Put your H's on. Don't leave anybody out. The incomplete equation below represents an esterification reaction. The alcohol represented by X. Circle only the acid functional group. We'll think acid functional group. Look at table R. See what that is. It has a C with a double bond L and LH. There is my acid functional group. 44, write the IUPAC name for the reactant based on the structural formula. So focus, they said reactant, reactant. So they want you to name this. So again, go to your table R, just copy what it says, but change it for the number of C's. That has two C's, I say two with F. I'm going to steal the rest of the word for an acid. F and O N acid. Last question, 45, draw the structural formula for the alcohol represented in the equation. Remember, alcohol, that's the one that has the OH, so they want to think, well, okay, where would that come from? So if I look over here, this two C's and then all, this is taken care of, okay? So this has to be what makes my alcohol. So I'm going to have three C's. My alcohol must be what was sitting over here. They took it off to make this water. Put your H's on. It's a tough question, but you can figure it out by what's missing. You just kind of want to look and see what's missing. So hopefully that helps you get through your organic. Uh, this is really important that you know this for the regions because honestly, this stuff is pretty easy if you just know how to use table R, table P, and table Q. I reference those tables by three quarters of the time throughout this. Other than that, know your reactions and you'll be good. Thanks, guys.